Today we are doing a play on some crispy chicken legs along with french fries as our side. And then we're gonna complement it with our moon sauce, which is our new two-in-one sauce and dip. Wanna see how we did it? Stay tuned. start with the ingredients today we have about five pounds of chicken legs nice and clean with the skin on we have some gold metal all-purpose flour some pink himalayan salt peanut oil for frying a ziploc bag which is the gallon size a tablespoon of cayenne pepper two tablespoons of black pepper and three tablespoons of our moon spice dry rub and then, of course, you guys, there are some ingredients that were not mentioned here in the ingredient list, which we'll talk about throughout the video. So get your pen and paper. Now, to help with the chicken legs in the frying process, I always like to kind of put a little pocket or a knife slit right around the thickest part of the chicken leg, which is usually at the top or at the joint where it would join with the chicken thigh. This is a step that you can do by choice, especially if you have those really large chicken legs. Um, and I am one person who is not a super fan of dry, I'm sorry, dry meat, of dark meat. Um, I prefer white meat, but today I decided to do chicken legs. So how I get my chicken legs to be number one, really, really seasoned. And number two, cooked thoroughly because you, know, you guys know chicken legs are notorious and chicken thighs for taking a lot longer to cook. And they also burn a lot faster. So this is my technique that I use to help with the cooking process to ensure that the meat is evenly cooked or fried and to also ensure that we are getting that flavor all the way to the bone. Now, an alternative to this is to use your um, injector or your meat injector and you can inject your chicken legs with some moon spice paste um, diluted with a little bit of chicken stock or water and you're able to inject that into the chicken as well. Now, once you are finished, actually, um, I don't know what the word is, <laughs> making slits in your chicken, we're gonna go ahead and add our seasonings, which we are adding our moon spice dry rub. So we used all three tablespoons of that. We also are gonna use about one and a half tablespoons of black pepper, and then we're gonna leave about a half a tablespoon to season our flour. And then for our cayenne pepper, this is a by choice item. Um, if you want a little bit of spice, you can add that cayenne. And I did save about half of that back to put into our flour as well. Now, after I season the chicken, I usually allow the chicken to rest. And that's when I start working on my flour. Um, it's, I'm, I'm going to be quite honest, guys. If you guys season your chicken the day before and allow it to rest overnight, Mm, that is when you definitely get that season to the bone effect, especially with that moon spice. And then, of course, once you are done with the chicken, I like to add, here's another pro tip, a little bit of hot sauce. Now, you can choose whatever hot sauce you like. I use a little bit of Grace. If you guys know, shout out to Grasshopper. Um, I use a little bit of Grace hot sauce to season mine. But you are welcome to use any other hot sauce you choose or you can skip the hot sauce in its entirety. Hence the reason why I did not mention these ingredients in the ingredient list. So these are pro tips that you will get throughout the video. Now, I had a, a little bit of flour left back from when I was actually pouring my flour into my counter containers. So I'm using the remainder of that flour. Um, measure wise, I didn't really measure you guys. Um, honestly, just make sure you have enough flour that can be dredged with all of your chicken. And that's really all that matters. Um, outside of that, I did pour in the rest of my black pepper. I did use the rest of my cayenne pepper. And then in this is where we used our pink Himalayan salt with just a small amount of salt because you don't want your crust to be unseasoned. And then I shook that up really, really well. So another pro tip, you guys, is if you want your chicken legs or wings or thighs or whatever to be super crispy, you can also add a little bit of cornstarch. Now, cornstarch is used to add a crispiness. Some people like to use baking soda. I prefer the cornstarch, and I didn't really use a whole ton of cornstarch. I use about half of a fourth of a cup because that was the measuring cup that I had available. So I used a half of a fourth of a cup into the flour. You can use a whole fourth of a cup, to be quite honest, for five pounds of chicken. 
but this was more than enough for me. I didn't want to have that cornstarch taste. I just wanted to have that crispiness that comes along with it. And then I shook it up really well. Another pro tip that I'm going to add is I also like to use egg sometimes when I'm dredging my chicken. So what I did was I took two eggs and I put them into a bowl. And with those two eggs, I'm using that as my wet mix. And then I have my flour as my dry mix. Some people prefer to use buttermilk. Others prefer to use water. Some people prefer to not have this filler portion at all. And they will just go straight from chicken to flour. It is all your choice. And then as a seasoning or flavor to my egg mixture, I put a little bit of hot sauce. This did not make the food spicy at all, you guys. My chicken was not spicy. It just had a really good flavor. And then it helped to enhance that moon spice flavor as well. So this is just basically building more flavors on your chicken. Once I finished scrambling up or mixing my eggs, I poured that right on my chicken. And then I just mix my chicken around in the egg mixture to be able to allow us to dredge it really easily. Do you, if you prefer, some people like to, you know, put one piece of chicken in the egg wash or the egg mixture and then put it in a flour. Me personally, I put on a glove, put the egg on the chicken and we're done. I'm trying to make it as simple as possible rather than making it super complicated. And then I have like 17 different bowls and all kinds of things going on. So this is just my way of doing it, you guys. You can improvise on this step, hence the reason why I didn't show it in the beginning when we were talking about ingredients, because these are all optional things that you can do when you are making your crispy fried chicken, okay? And then don't forget, when you're adding your egg, I highly recommend making sure that you beat your egg first, season your egg first, and then put it on your chicken. I don't recommend just putting the egg directly on the chicken because you're not going to get a good mix. You're going to have maybe too much yolk on one, too much egg white on another, so it's best to mix it first. Okay, so now we are going to go ahead and dredge our chicken. And here's another pro tip, you guys. When you're frying chicken, if you want your skin to be nice and crispy and you don't want to have to double double dredge your chicken once you put the flour on the chicken put it on a sheet pan with a little bit of or a cooling rack and allow that chicken to begin to absorb the flour that is number one how you keep the flour from being all over your pan and basically you losing all of your dredge mix and number two that allows the meat to absorb a lot of that flour that cornstarch and that egg so that once it is time to fry you still have a really nice crust. And when I say the crust of this chicken tonight was, ooh, so good. Everyone in the house was like, mom, did you make more? Mind you, five pounds of chicken was about 16 chicken legs. I'd say about, I'd say, yeah, I'd say about 14 to 16 chicken legs. And I have a family of five and everyone was like, is there more chicken? And I'm like, no, there's no more. I should have made more. <laughs> Even I... The crust was my favorite part because I literally made sure that I allowed my chicken to rest before I put it in the oil. Now let's talk about oil while I'm dredging the chicken. I like to use either peanut oil or frying oil. I don't really have a brand in specific, um, me personally, as long as it is either a peanut oil or a frying oil, which you guys know frying oil is a combination of peanut oil and another oil, sometimes it's soybean oil. Sometimes it's vegetable oil, sometimes it's corn oil. It just depends on the manufacturer of that frying oil. I like to use that frying oil because it keeps the meat nice and moist and it keeps the exterior nice and crispy. So if you have ever fried a turkey, this is exactly the same kind of oil you're using to fry your turkey. It might just be straight out peanut oil or it might be a frying oil that is a mixture. Now, if you have an allergy to peanuts, then highly recommend you switch it over to either a corn oil, which is another oil that does not seep or absorb into your meat, or worst case, you can use vegetable oil, just depending on where you're located. I always keep a gallon of peanut oil because frying for me, I like the taste of peanut oil on my fried foods. It just keeps them nice and clean and light, and it keeps that crust nice and crispy. So, now that we have dredged our chicken, I do allow it to sit on the actual pan. And how I fry the chicken is how it was dredged. So first out is first in. So when I say first out, the first pieces that are out of the dredge are going to be the pieces that I start with, 
when I'm doing my fry. Okay, because those pieces have had time to absorb that flour. It has had time to absorb that egg. It has had time to absorb those seasonings that we used. So that's the reason why I do it that way, because I don't want to lose a lot of my batter or my fry um, dredge. I guess you can say my flour that I put on my chicken. Now I'm using my trusty wok. Of course, you guys, all of the different tools you guys see me using on today's video is available in my Amazon store by going to crystalsamazonstore.com or clicking the link in the description box. In regards to the moon spice, that is available at elitetotalbodycare.com. All right, so we've started frying our chicken. Um, for each piece of chicken, I did not create a pan full of oil. So there was still a little piece of the chicken that was exposed and I just kind of flipped them over and that made sure that all sides were nice and crispy. It made sure that everything was cooked really, really well. And I'd say in total, the chicken legs were in the oil between 12 and 15 minutes per batch. Now, if you're using a deep fryer, this time might change. It's really up to you, but I like my chicken to have a nice golden crust on it. I like my chicken to be fully cooked, <laughs> number two. And did I say I like my chicken to be fully cooked? Okay, that's number three. Okay, so you can fry yours to whatever color you like, but make sure if you are doing a light fry that you're checking the temperature that in the inside of your chicken that is over 160 degrees to ensure that you are not going to make someone sick <laughs> with your undercooked chicken, which I've seen a lot of those. So once we keep, we, we got our first batch out and we just keep frying them, put everything together. I did not do my fries on camera. Honestly, they were just frozen French fries. It's really not that serious, you guys. And once I finished my chicken, I made my fries. My kids love fries with their chicken. And then we paired it with a side of our all new moon sauce, which is a two in one sauce and dip. So here we're going to go ahead and plate. Now, I didn't have a ton of fries, you guys, so I tried to make it look super cute. You guys know your girl is still working on her plating, so we're just going to skip over that. But the fries that I used were Nathan's French fries. I got those right in the Publix grocery store. Nothing special. You can use whatever fries you choose. And then for the chicken, the chicken, same thing. I got that at my local grocery store. I didn't go and get antibiotic free. I didn't, I didn't care. I just got chicken legs, okay? So you can be as specific as you want. And then I added that moon sauce. You guys, moon sauce is now available for pre-sale on our website at EliteTotalBodyHair.com. If you've not tried the moon spice, go ahead, do it now before it's too late because we sell out every single time. And I'll see everybody in the next video. Comment down below and tell me what you guys thought about the recipe. Peace.